The London Lesbian and Gay Film Festival is famous for bringing the best in new international queer cinema to the UK, and this year it celebrated its 25th anniversary at the BFI South Bank. Despite a reduction in length due to funding cuts, the festival still managed to provide a rich and enjoyable programme of events that included lectures, discussions, cabaret, and of course, a showcase of world-class films. As a BFI young reporter, I was lucky enough to be invited to attend the opening night and had a chat to some of the guests before the event. This included a rich blend of young and old, regular attendees and complete newbies, and perhaps most importantly, a mixture of gay, straight and bisexual audiences. Is this your first time at the festival? Have you been before? It's probably my 15th. Really? Yeah, I don't want to give away my, my age, but I'm older. <laughs> what do you think of the festival? Um, I think it's, it's very well preserved to find films out there that give a reflection on people and what they're doing in the world. Well, maybe they need to change the word gay. Could it could be sexual identity of some kind? The festival has changed a lot since its first edition in 1986. What is interesting to note is the increase in lesbian and gay films into mainstream cinema in recent years, something which the festival reflects. In previous years they've had a single man and milk, and they kind of they do bring in the audiences and they do kind of remind people that you know it, it, they are mainstream films as well. Otherwise it just seems to think that LGBT films kind of have a niche. That's a good thing because I think these things these things like normalise it and that's what I think is very important. It just normalises LGBT relationships. The evening kicked off with a sneaky preview of Greg Akari's Kaboom, which won't be out on general release until June this year. Here's what the director himself had to say about the film. I really wanted to make uh, a sort of a film like some of the earlier films I made in the 90s um, for sort of the next generation. That was one of the reasons why I made the movie. You know, as an artist, it's kind of not possible for me to kind of go backwards. Kaboom is kind of, it's a step forward and also a, a kind of looking back. I really set out to make something that was completely creatively free, totally uncensored, just let it go, let it go crazy. Akari is well known for iconic films such as The Living End, Nowhere and Mysterious Skin and has played an important role in new gay cinema. Personally, this films mean a lot to me. I remember when I was about 13 or 14, um, staying up late to watch The Living End, which was screening on Channel 4 at about 2 in the morning. Um, it introduced me to a whole new world of films, and its anger and its invention and its unapologetic queerness just was such a revelation to me. Um, and now with Kaboom, Araki still has the ability to make me feel like that. Watching this film, I felt like a teenager again. It brought back all those feelings of excitement and joy of when I first discovered him. After the screening, I headed to the bar to see what people thought of the film and of the festival in general. It's really awesome, one of his, like his back to form, um, he's probably his best film for uh, years. I loved his older films um, and you know, recently I haven't been as huge a fan of the stuff but I think that, that's fun, it's sexy, it's hot and it's surprising. Oh, I love the film. I thought it was fantastic. Are you familiar with his work at all? I am not. I'm not familiar with the work. But I, I loved it, and I think that it definitely had appeal to a, a non-gay audience. I think, regardless of who you are, it's, it's such a well-made film. I think it's got lots of humour, very tongue-in-cheek, and it really works as a film. Um, and I, I'm pleased to hear that it's getting a general release as well, so everyone can enjoy the uh, quality film. It's, it's excellent, yeah. Is it your first time at the festival? It is my first time at the festival. Um, I haven't been before, um, but I thought I'd come up this time. What do you think of it? Yeah, I really like it. I think it's a great celebration of film, of the, um, of the genre. This is the festival to come to. Uh, is this the first time you guys have been to the festival? Like, no, we've been coming for years. What do you think of it? A really good festival. So. Carry on like this one, fantastic. It was yeah. absolutely amazing because I had no idea what it was going to be like. Really good. Are you familiar with the director's other work? Or? Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't seen anything else. Would you see more of his work? Do you think oh, definitely, it? yes. Brilliant cin cinematography in it as well and really good uh, use of, uh, you know, Video technology in film and so on is really good. What would you say to young people who were thinking about coming to the festival? 
Uh, definitely, definitely come. There's something in it for everyone. And half of it is just coming to the festival. And, and the, the ambience, the films, the, the people, it's just good fun. The festival's great success is not only in providing a unique platform for independent and gay films, but in creating an inclusive and lively atmosphere for cinema lovers of all kinds to meet and mingle and share their thoughts on what they've seen. Whether you're a hardcore film buff or someone that just wants to experience the social side of their events, the London Lesbian and Gay Film Festival is a great place to start. For more information and highlights from this year's festival, visit www.bfi.org.uk forward slash LLGFF. I'm Holly Powell-Jones, reporting at the BFI for Step 2 TV.